Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Yeah, How's everybody doing today? This is Attorney Antonio Moore here to have a discussion today. A financial discussion. We haven't had one in some months. And I, I just want to kind of revisit some things. Um, I'm looking at the landscape for American millennials, Gen Z, and I really see a lot of confusion. I did a wonderful show with Jack Morgan. Thank you for him for him coming on the show. But there's some charts that I went over in that show that I had never shown on my own show. I mean, on my own solo show, even on my show. But um, I wanted to go over today in more detail because I think there's a lot of confusion about where Gen Z and millennials fit in the economic landscape, particularly when it comes to black millennials and black Gen Z and how you guys basically are largely invisible. And then you got Gen X and you guys are aging up and don't have any retirement accounts in many cases. Only the oldest of you have pensions. So I want to have the discussion today. I have this on screen for a reason because it kind of frames the discussion. This is an article. And then to give you the date, this is back from 87. And there was this idea of the arrival of a black middle class, the new black middle class. Who's in and who's out? Got them in their business suits and everything else. Well, the framing of this show is I feel like a lot of people in 2024 that are anywhere from the ages of, say, 25 to 45 or even 48, 49 are living as if they're in 1987 and you're not. And the only thing that puts you in 87 is a massive amount of transfer, meaning upwards of six, seven hundred thousand dollars from your boomer. And we know only a few percentile of black families even have three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars net worth. So you don't have that. So you build the identity in another era and also based on a lineal wealth transfer, you'll never get. And then you talk about it as if talking about it makes it make sense. I want to talk today because I'm going to get into it. I got people talking about energy and uh, I had a, a gentleman who had a tweet that I responded to and he felt some kind of way because he was talking about key, about you know, chasing dreams. And then he said, he's not talking about money. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about money today because we've grown in this channel. We're grown in this thread. We're grown in this ADOS discussion. I mean, American descendants of slavery. We're grown because we're Americans living in a first world America, chasing your dream. And then don't get honest. We're not 15 out here. So as we have this discussion, we cannot have this discussion without a context of what these two individuals that would now probably be six, seven years old were living within. They were living within a deflated set of assets. Those assets are now how people are living today that are their children and grandchildren. And if your boomer or your gen or your uh, great gen did not do this for you, you're not going to be able to make it up with labor. Now, I'm not here to say you can never make it up, but I'm just saying chasing your dreams. Let's put them dreams in context. So in 1980, a new house was $76,000, $76,400. Uh, the median income was about sixteen dollars A new car was $7,000. Minimum wage was $3. A movie ticket was two sixty nine. dollars Gas was $1. Postage stamps were $0.15. Cent, and you can read the rest. Now, this is not just a discussion about different costs in different eras. But this is a discussion that allows you to begin to understand how much has changed in less than a generation and to talk about the why. Because a lot of it is bad policy by boomers. And I, I have a couple of testimonies by boomers that I'll bring in later that explain that because I think there's a discussion amongst white boomers that is not necessarily happening amongst black boomers. Like an honesty about what happened and how everything was sold out from under the feet of the next generation. And you were supposed to at least find the loophole for your particular lineal progeny. And if you didn't do both and then you're now talking, you just don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you need to watch. Let's talk about it. Part of the discussion of this channel, of the whole ethos of ADOS, of, of a, a, a whole awakening has led to these kind of comments. Shout out to East Texas. Let me tell you something. Tone Talks don't know it. But he has educated more ADOS millennials with what matters most, more than any other scholar in decades. Thank you so much, East Texas. Camille Abernathy then responded saying, I'm a Gen Xer and Tony and Yvette Carnell's education is more than I've gotten from anyone else or my HBCU. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to do an education. 
And part of this is this narrative. We've been talking about it since 2016, 2017, but it's here now. This is a new article. It came out like uh, maybe less than three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come for money. And I, I need you guys to understand this, to understand the discussion. But we're going to go back of, uh, about seven, eight months to another show that I did. And I'll come back to you in about four minutes to understand this estate tax. You're supposed to have some money to have these kids, especially if you're talking about these kids being something special in this world. But then they go finish college and you say, why, why, why you don't want to work? And they, they can't get a job for more than $12 an hour because you didn't do no politics. You've been around here playing. What do you mean I've been playing? Oh, when's the last time you went and, and actually uh, did some stuff in your community to make sure that this estate tax got changed in your local election, got changed in your state election, got changed at the national level? You didn't do anything. Because you might not know this exists, but that's why I'm going to do this show. So you know this exists and you know what you put your kids into. So when we look at the historical estate tax exemptions, you can see where it starts, where this is where a state tax started historically. And I'm only going back to 97 in this chart. I have another chart where I'm gonna go back further. So in 2023, a state tax don't start. That means everything that somebody gets from their parents is not taxed until $13 million. And if your parents are married, it's $26 million. So white America has created and mechanized the whole system where we go to work after coming up from 16 year old parents and we gotta get taxed at 40%, even though we don't have no kids that's going to school and all that's good. And mechanize the system where they're basically able to transfer up to 13 million in single or 26 million together and the kids can get it free and clear. And don't know black people really even know. How did you think that you got to have kids that went to law school, that started businesses? Can some of y'all say, we don't need no college because we don't have businesses. We'll talk about that in a second, just making up fantasies. And you weren't going to fight against this policy, let alone have no uh, life insurance policy or nothing. You're just going to leave these kids here as scavengers? So if they married, it's $26 million, But we're married at a 30% rate, and they're married at a 70% rate. So basically, there is no estate tax which allows them to codify and calcify all of the advantages that they had in the 60s, but that's not in the reparations from California because they was watching my show and they was fans and they didn't understand there was a long play here that they wasn't part of. See, they messed up. I don't know if you guys understand the level with which people have, there's like layered failure here because people don't understand the discussion. So what are you looking at? In the chat, how many people have seen this before? Because if you haven't seen this before and you got children, I don't know how you got this far where you have a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old and you haven't seen this chart before. In the chat, how many people have seen this chart before? I need you to have seen this chart because you can't understand how ignorant it is when you talk about somebody being lazy if you've never seen this chart before. Come on. We got people in the chat. Well, I'll explain it. So in 97, a state tax started at $600,000. And the top level was 55%. That's just 97. In 2023, it starts at $13 million. And the top rate is only 40%. Let's go back to a metric to have you understand 23 million white households have more than $350,000. You want your child, the one that has you as a parent, to compete not against the top 30% of white America, but the top five or the top one, because you want to be a business owner with a million dollar business, or you want them to be a doctor or surgeon, or you want them to be a lawyer, but you don't want to pay nothing. But you didn't know that this chart exists. You didn't know about a state tax. You didn't know about this. And you thought this was all going to work out. We're going to get into it right now. Let's get deep. So they have changed it from 600000 uh during Obama's years. It went all the way up to $5 million. During Trump's years, it went all the way up to $13 million. 
and it's 26 if it's a couple. So 30% of white people are transferring hundreds of thousands of dollars to their children and you're going to leave yours none and you think it's all good. So I did that to frame the discussion. I didn't want to have to overview it again. Again, that's from a 2023 show. And in this show, I'm really trying to ask the question and I'm going to let you guys come in here and continue on with these children in a world like this. 3103883499 cuz you're living in 1983 1985 but you live in reality in 2024 and nobody's having any discussions because whether it be the memory of God bless they soul a boomer that was in your life or the actual boomer that is in your home right now they are expressing realities of a cotton candy moment as the normal idea of America when it was really just a lotto moment. It just was. I'll show you in a second with interest rates. I want to talk because if you did not win in that lottery, well, this is the consequence now. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come for money. And a big part of that is the policy that I just showed that really happened over the life of boomers from uh, allowing state schools to be able to charge extreme amounts of uh, uh, of cost to uh, the how they allowed the estate tax to basically be created in a way where it just allows wealth to just bounce around generation to generation, increasing the inability to make anything up with labor. And they don't even know. But let's talk about this chart here that we've shown before that frames everything because i think that the identity we have is during the best moment possibly in american history for an everyday person when we live in possibly one of the worst so this is one of the best and this is one of the worst so what this chart shows and this is what i framed last time on the show is the amount of wealth held by the bottom 90 versus the point one point one so there's about if you think about it, 150 million or so American families. So we're talking about 150,000 families, almost all white, having the same amount of wealth as the bottom 135 million. And part of the mechanism that makes it so you able to swallow and digest it is they create a celebrity class of black folk and then they bring them in and then they show them a lot of times on television. So you don't realize that almost all the people in that point one are just white folks that codified their advantage. That is the Hunger Games part of the NBA and the NFL. Would you hate the rich if there was no LeBron? You probably would, but you can't because LeBron exists. This was well thought out. But to get into the chart itself is the last time those two groups had the same amount of wealth was the Depression. People living on the riverbanks. Black folks starved out. Well, as a result of policy and way, women's rights and civil rights, by the time we get to 1980, the bottom 90, and the bottom 90 is represented by the red line, their share of wealth is taking home 35%. I believe they should take home 40, 45, 55%, if not more. And you have the top 0.1 go from taking the same 20% or so of as the bottom 90 back in the depression to taking about five. There, there's no Elon Musk. There's no Bill Gates. They have government has broken up the wealth held by this gilded class policy. I will talk to a black person today that not only isn't in the bottom 90, but is in the bottom third of America. And they'll talk about libertarian, uh, everybody should never have to pay taxes policy when they should be the other person. They should be totally into government breaking up this wealth. We built a society of crazed people because they don't know this chart. Because they don't know that they ate us. I don't even know if they know they're American. But they're here, though, and they're talking. And this brings me to another issue here on YouTube. See, I'm not a farmer, so if we get into a YouTube channel, which I don't know of, about pesticides and what crops to grow, I don't speak because I'm not a farmer. See, I'm not a basketball player, so if we talking about layups and, and dribbling and, and moves and stuff, leave that to Gilbert Arenas. 
But in this political slash economic space, we have allowed Babel to be the, the, the filler. So we get a lot of discussion as though there is no expertise in this space. I partially blame ec economists and also political scientists because they want to talk about hair instead of money. Come on, crown that. They put it in that reparations bill. But I also want to talk about how what we see now is that we don't want to realize that the internet, TikTok, YouTube have created a space where Babel becomes not just content, but truth because somebody says it with certainty. Far too often we are letting people that are very low educated, oftentimes even high school dropouts, but low educated, even high school graduates, speak with no idea what they're talking about because they say it with certainty. And I come back to this chart because this chart is imperative to understand. The reason why it's imperative to understand is, shout out to Yvette in there, is because if you don't understand your moment, you can't understand the politics you need to change that moment. This is a moment where we're supposed to be basically throwing tomatoes at rich people. But instead, you're celebrating them. Hold on. We're supposed to be throwing tomatoes at rich people unless they're doing policy that directly changes the dynamic of our political condition, which is very rare. But instead, you are celebrating them because they gave you an identity built on being rich while you damn poor. Can we talk? So you live and these lines have crossed now. Rich take home more than the, more than the bottom 90, the point one. And you but your identity is framed by your grandma that's calling you or your your granddaddy that gave you them, them, them proverbs back in 1983. He gave you them lessons. That it was a cotton candy era. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, I wanted to do this chart to show. This is a little rough, but I, this is, again, the chart was, was originally done by Dalio. Uh, I think he's worth like 15 billion. And it was this chart that showed the reality of wealth. But I, I, I added the colors because I wanted you guys to understand the dynamic and how your identity frames inside of this. But I needed to do another chart, another version of what should have happened. See, what should have happened is this right here. See, there was no war. There was no apocalyptic collapse of technology. There was nothing that led to the shift other than the boomers giving it all up. And the shift meaning we should have had for multiple generations the shift that happened during the boomers' lives that their parents had fought for exists for Generation X, for millennials, for Gen Z. It, it, the, the, any change maybe should have happened as a result of a war or multiple generations down. And once this doesn't happen, meaning the bottom 90 continually takes home 35% of the wealth and the bottom and the top 0.1 continuously takes home 5%, Many of your identities don't make sense anymore because it don't make sense to listen to people from a generation before you. They, they don't live in your era. You you pretty much really would need to talk to somebody that's probably passed on that was your age in the 30s. Because the people here, they don't know anything about like what we're going through. I'm just talking to you today. What would have happened if boomers did good politics for the middle class? So how does that express itself? State school stayed cheap. How does it express himself? Boomers pay their taxes. What do you mean? Far too often in some of these states, we've created tax loopholes where the property that, that, that a boomer has, particularly white boomers, and they masked it with a few black boomers in, in, in a meeting or anything else, but it's pretty much white boomers. They'll have a tax break. Well, that's a subsidy. That is a handout. Well, when it stops, they say, well, you're raising my taxes. No, you didn't pay your proper taxes. So when they don't pay their property ta proper taxes, understand what happens. You then have excessive speeding tickets in your neighborhood or red light cameras. So you end up paying their taxes on top of already, hold on, paying for the fact that there's no pension. You pay for their pension because the pensions are underfunded. It's welfare. Exactly, Michael. I want to talk today. I'm framing it because I think a lot of you guys are living in 1985 in 2024 with your head in the sand. And this show is about pulling that head out and asking you what you're going to do. 310-388-3499 if you want to talk. I want to hear from you. And I understand why the boomers thought that things were going to be better. 
If you saw this in a magazine and you came from a sharecropping farm, you would think that, oh, they finna fix everything in the world. A traveling executive checks his email from his office electronic mail system through a Panasonic RLH1400 handheld computer. He checking his email on a payphone with a device that he pulled out his suitcase with a pipe. So the, the prospects of why boomers thought that there was gonna be a new black middle class, it comes from a place. But we cannot live in their yesterday. We must live in our tomorrow, let alone our today. You can't tell me about chasing dreams as a 40 something year old man and not have no dollars attached. Talk about it. Caller, what's your name? Where you want to, where you calling from? Hey, 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 my name is John. I'm calling you from Chicago, Tom. Give me your take on it. Uh, uh, right before today's show, I was literally just having this conversation with my daughter. And we were talking about inheritance and how there's a lack of inheritance that's going to come from, I'm a boomer, I'm a baby baby boomer, I was born in 1962. Okay. And I was fortunate enough to have a job that allowed me to get a pension. So I have a pension, a very small pension, and I'm old enough to get ready to collect some social security. Mm -hmm. However, if it were not for an insurance policy that isn't a lot, uh, because all of the work was stolen my mom had a property, mm -hmm. remarried, and the selfishness of her husband took out of the money. And people are not thinking, well, I'm kidding. So my daughter is a millennial. She's 35 years old. And she is thinking about everything that you and that are talking about concerning this wealth transfer that is about to take place. Or is taking place. And the fact that there will and the, and the fact that there will be no wealth transfer from us. Many of us just simply don't have it. And we're not honest enough to say that. And, and that's what's so shameful about it. And I'll add to and let me add to that. No, no, I know when we're not face to face, sometimes there isn't that natural break. What I will add to that is that we are, are also dishonest about our limitations and how you fix those limitations with policy. See, a lot of us have to realize yep. the reason why you're doing that is because you're selfish. See, you don't want to realize that maybe your moment is over. I know you're 46 or are you 53, but you're going to have to do something for two generations now or the next generation. Because what we have done here yep. is inherited a set of failed politics that goes back to 1980. It shows it right here on the chart when it shifts. As I said to you before, it should have looked like this. It should have flatlined. In that world, all of these talks about chasing your dreams, all of these talks about uh, buying up stocks, all of these talks about wealth makes much more sense. That is not our world. This is our world. And you can either live in it or deal with the consequence. Go ahead, Carl. And that is the absolute fact. And the simple fact of the matter is everyone's favorite president, that particular former favorite president, Barack Obama, while he... Let black Americans fail. He dated a white America through policy. This policy, I think, we were supposed to let them collapse in 2008. And what did he do? He boosted the stocks. He undergirded them with quality division while at the same time allowing black Americans to lose their homes due to the, the crash of 2008. Come on. And no matter how much you try to explain to a boomer who's 70, 75, they don't want to hear it because they are in competition with the open borders. They have their attention. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I tell you something that would change that is if that retirement dried up. Because a lot of them are on pensions that the states are underfunded and it's just being propped up right now. So, like, it's literally yep. just, like, us supporting a, a set of – because because re retirement was never meant to be 25 years if you work 35 years or 30 years. It was not meant for that long. Right. So now what we have is a, is, is a whole dynamic where there's not discussion about when is our moment. Right now we have two people running for president that are in their, what, mid-70s, if not late-70s. Uh, how? It's not, it's not their moment. 
And that's reflected throughout the whole society. So many of you that are late Gen Xers to early boom, um, to, um, to the oldest boomers. So when I say late Gen Xers, I mean the youngest Gen Xers all the way to the oldest millennials. You'll never have a moment in the society. It's going to transition straight from uh, boomers to uh, to the youngest millennials and Generation Z because they will not have the same care to give you your time. And this now is your time to get honest about your situation, get honest about how we got here, get honest about the politics you need to do, join the ADOS Advocacy Foundation, and most of all, get honest about what you can't do. Caller, any last thing you want to say to the audience? Yeah, I'd like to say one last thing, Tom. I would like to say thank you for speaking and telling folks to get honest about their wealth position because there really isn't a wealth position for ADOS in this country because it was all stolen from us and we need to do policy to get it back so when we hear anybody talking about small government that should be a red flag to any black person thanks Tom. thank you and especially when it's coming in from in your own house you get these young people talking about uh, government shouldn't be in people's business well okay when you when they don't have no unemployment for you we'll talk about that so here is the chart that I wanted to show earlier to frame what I'm saying. So often we hear about these high interest rates that we're currently in. And this chart basically cuts off before uh, about like 2012, 2013. So it, it would go back up. That's the way it is. You'll hear a, a person that is about 70 years old tell you these are normal interest rates. They had deflated assets. That's the first thing as a result of the policy that came out of this chart right here, which is what naturally ha actually happened. And those deflated assets had aberrationally high interest rates that led to them acquiring and paying off those assets at those deflated values. But their interest rate wasn't normal. So for them to say that, they're basically unaware of what America has been. And this is part of what I'm saying today. You're living in a 1980, listening to somebody who don't know enough to tell you what they're talking about. I don't care that they're 70. So when you look at interest rates, they've traditionally been much lower than this level that we're seeing now that mirrors here because we're back up. We saw 2% back in 1950. We saw 3.71 back in 1900. We saw 5.19 back in 1824. But what you see is the cost of assets in 1970 when these interest rates were high. A new house in 1970 was 23,000. Average income was 9,000. New car was 3,400. Minimum wage was two dollars. Movie ticket was a dollar 55. Now don't forget though, what I showed you initially, that means that the same person, if they bought that house, had seen fifty thousand dollars in increase over that 1970, to 1980 period because the house went up just by them sitting there. All right. So they don't even know. My tweet was, and this is not an attack on boomers. This is a framing of the discussion because it is already set up for them to talk to us. So let's talk to them. Don't let boomers tell you about their high interest in 75. That was in a historical outlier period looking over hundreds of years and their assets were deflated compared to today. High interest against a 60K home or a $5,000 car in 75 is not high interest against a $500,000 home and a $50,000 car in 2024 while normalizing for income versus education in each period. Boomers have truly centered their lives and the governmental supports that anchored their privilege. Instead of Uber jobs, because there was no Uber, there was a labor rights movement. So when we go back, there is an expression inside of this chart. What you see is this is labor rights rising. What you see is this is Obama along with the Republicans leading to gig jobs. There was no gig job before Obama. They launched a month after, Uber launches a month after he sworn in. March 09, sworn in January 28th or so, 09. So this all is an expression of that. It is a gutting of the opportunities for anyone that is not already in the have part of society, in the wealth part of society, which includes almost all of Adolf's people. So we come back to this and I say, instead of Uber jobs, they were, they were unions. 
State schools were near free, and families literally lived on one high school educated income, just to name a few of many privileges they enjoyed. Don't forget that, too. No student loans. And they didn't lose five or six years of work. They started working right at 18. I want to talk. I just want to get to it. Right now, the assets are inflated. We look, and they're talking about uh, the uh, household's financial asset allocation and inside of equity, which I believe is stocks. We haven't seen nothing like this since 2000, 48% of it, because they're overinflated right now. Assets, houses, stocks, cars. In fact, when we look at things, the average new car interest rate today is 9.7%, 973 the average used car interest rate is 14.33. Looking back, these are similar to some of the credit card rates of the early 2000s. I want to I, I want to make sure that I'm clear and cut this in. Hold on one second so that you can actually hear this. It's a short clip, 30 seconds. Right now, this is the latest data as of March 19th from Cox Automotive which uh, they pull from the Federal Reserve, Dealer Track, and Bloomberg. Average used car interest rate, 14.33%. The average new car interest rate, 9.73%. As you can see here, the green line up at the tippy top, used car interest rate, they're down just a tick. Their high watermark was closer to 14, and 14.5, uh, 14.6%. 14 so we're at 14.33. And new car interest rates have been steady. They've been at nearly 10% on average. So... We live in a society of overinflated assets and also obscenely high interest rates. And no one is really having a discussion of what that means about their prospects while being told things on the Internet like chase your dreams or just buy some stocks while you have no wealth and you're not mad at nobody. I just want to talk because I, 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 I don't understand what people are talking about half the time. And I also don't understand how this space created a, a world where everybody is the same. It's flat. Y'all got high school dropouts next to me talking about economics after I wrote a paper with Pete, with Duke financial uh, economists. What are we talking about? We got a guy talking about chasing your dreams, but then tell me as a middle-aged man, that don't include money. All right. Okay. As he explains, and this is a set, another clip I'm going to show in a second. If home, and this contextualizes what I'm saying, because you'll get people that'll tell you, well, the incomes were less. No, 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 no. At meaning in 1975 or 1985, as this man he explains, I think his name is Michael Bordenero. If home prices tracked inflation, the median home today would be $177,000 instead of over $400,000. It's a giant asset bubble with high interest tacked on. And part of the reason, before I show his clip, that there is this asset bu bubble is this point right here. And that's why I showed my clip earlier from the old show. This is an era built on transfers. Your income taxed at 30 or 40% is the icing. They don't want you to get mad, so they feed you LeBron James or Steph Curry or some uh, rapper Drake. But the reality is they are sitting down thinking about how to get you calm about why and how they get to live good. And that's this chart. When the lines cross, life ain't going to be too good. You have to do the politics to make these lines be spread. And you can't get people that speak conservatively, and I'll show you in a second what I mean, while telling you about chasing your dreams. They don't know what they're talking about. I want to talk. But before I move on, I want to show this short clip. Inflation since the 1960s, according to a new study. So inflation right now is 10 times higher than it was 60 years ago, but home prices are 24 times more expensive. And if home prices tracked inflation since 1963, the median house value right now in the U.S. would be about 177000 Whereas it's actually closer to 400,000. All right. So we got a lot of people that are confused about the idea and the metrics of middle age success in America, the first world country. What, what is it? 
the number because you need leisure time to even chase your dreams in terms of like if you want to be a, a, a mountain climber or you want to be a, a super marathoner those are leisure times you got to have time off of work you've paid for the family you paid the life insurance you have that paid for so now you, so we, we we got people in the uber car that comes out of bad politics talking about they don't need to worry about the money a part of it because they're not talking about something that absolves money because they're talking about mountain climbing. You need to go price one of those Patagonia jackets. What they call it? Mm -hmm. A couple hundred dollars. Gen Z has 86% less purchasing power than boomers did in their 20s. Purchasing power is going down. Gen Z has 86% less Purchasing power compared to baby boomers when they were in their 20s. Americans have seen wage increase by 80% since the 70s. However, the average consumer price index has increased by over 500%. Let's go back to this chart and just give that context. In 1970, the average income was 9400 and the average house was $23,450. So let's talk about that in context. If the average new house is over 400,000, 425, 430,000. To match this, the average income would need to be about what? 200,000. Not 40, 50. Housing costs are going up. Housing prices and rental rates have shot up. Gen Z is paying almost 100% more for homes. Today, the average house is $309,000. It's much higher than that now. This, that's 2022. In the 70s, it was $24,800 or 185000 in today's dollars. Similarly, the median rent is $2,000 per month. College costs are going way up. Tuition rates have skyrocketed. As again, as I said, part of that is there's no state school pressure against even the private schools, the competition. There is no state school actually being funded by the state. They gutted all that and put it all inside of the pensions. Talk about it. They gutted all that and said, we don't care and we're going to go after out-of-state people. They gutted all that and then immigration policy, so we're we going to spread it so everybody gets a chance. No, hold up. We built this school. The average price of tuition at a public university has increased by 310%, while the price of a four-year private college has increased by 245%. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. A lot of people are struggling because they don't understand. You need to know your environment, not just what you think about your environment. You can go outside in shorts if you want to when it's snowing. It don't make no sense, though. You can go out there with no shoes in the flood. It don't make no sense, though. You can do anything you want to in the context of your moment. And what I'm telling you right now is when these lines again cross, it's not a good moment. They just have made a method, made a system where it's not expressed and seen so clearly. See, you don't see the homeless the way, see, you don't see it all because you don't really understand that they created enough television. They created just enough gas. They created just enough car where you don't really understand how close you are to calamity until you're in calamity. But what protects you from calamity is this. Generational wealth that ties you back to when assets were deflated. Come on. And you can ride that $23,000 house all the way up to $400,000 and live on the gap. And for ADOS people, that's rare, if ever. And for white people, that's top 40%, top 30%. And for many people, you don't know. You just don't know. So you got a lot of people that are on their second marriage. Hold on. Or they on their they, 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 they third child by the second person. But we don't talk about how you what happened with the first person. We don't talk about the lack of discussion, the lack of economic uh, evaluation, the lack of of true connection that happened that made it so you didn't really delve into that relationship economically, uh, uh, spiritually, financially. And so now when we talk about it, you frustrated because now you got to actually talk. Can we talk? 
It's hard to have a relationship when the lines cross because when the lines cross, people's families is, is messed up. It, it, it ain't as many family reunions. You remember all the family reunions in the 80s with the t-shirts? When them lines cross, people, families can't make, buy the ticket. Gen Z has 86% less purchasing power than baby boomers did in their 20s. On the other side, you see a whole generation of Gen Z that are anywhere, I think, between 12 and like 24, where they don't understand their lot in life. They do not understand the realities of how important and how instrumental and how pivotal their parents are for what they're going to be in this life. So they, the parents, because they were mistreated as older millennials or as Gen Xers, have raised their kids totally unaware of the fact that they're not going to leave them no wealth. They raised uh, ballet dancing poverty. They raised soccer playing boule that don't have no wealth transfer coming. And now when they got to go to work, they don't want to work. Can we talk? Gen Z is toxic for companies, employers believe. 71% of recently surveyed employers said their Gen Z employees were the most likely to experience mental health issues on the job. An employer's description of Gen Z employees, absolutely delusional, complete lack of common sense, and zero critical reasoning. They, they, they basically were lawnmower parents with no actual thing to catch the grass. So they pushing it over the grass, and then the grass just falling out the back and going back into the ground. So we got a boule class of Gen Z that are 23 years old that were told they could be anything in the world that that basically became of age during a black president being in office while they were in primary school. And now we going to tell them they don't have no money and we don't have no money to transfer to them. And then also now they see the consequence of the politics because they got to drive Uber. You told me that I was going to be a physicist or the president of America. You had me do a speech, and then I had the Obama haircut and the outfit, and where's the money, though? You said that if I read Boyce's financial literacy cards, and I know what these cards mean, that I could be a millionaire in 10 minutes. And then you wonder why they don't want to leave the house and stop playing the video game. You created mania. You did not deal with the reality of the consequence of letting those lines cross, of allowing Obama to, to prop, prop up Google, Uber, of allowing your, 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 your boomer grandparents to keep their tax break. Well, they don't a fixed income. Well, they got a property worth 700000 and the city needs its taxes. So either the city get it from them or it pay, you got to pay it in speeding tickets. It's not a, a, a tax increase. It's a break of that subsidy that's been on far too long. I want to talk. You know what I'm talking about, where they got them speaking. I am the president of America, and I believe everyone should have a chance. And I believe that the next person that should be president should look like me. You know how they do it. I'm telling them nothing about how, how, how Jared Kushner's Jared Kushner, who, who's married to Donald Trump's daughter, his father was investing the maximum you can invest to a senator from the boy's age of 10 or 11. So when he got of age, who wrote his recommendation to Harvard? That senator, Harvard University. This is the rise of legacy. Don't let me be the first to tell you far too late. Millennials could become the richest generation ever, but only if they already come from money. Millennials are projected to inherit $90 trillion over the next two decades. According to a new wealth report, this wealth transfer is set to make them the richest generation ever. But Gen Z are in a position to have more, more ways to create their own wealth, the report says. I'll explain how this is just BS. If you're a millennial whose parents have a boatload of money, you're about to make your generation historically rich. Over the next 20 years, $90 trillion worth of assets is expected to move between generations, mostly from older generations such as boomers to millennials, according to a new wealth report from the global property consultancy, Knight Frank. So when you look at these prices, part of what's happening is what's being priced in is that there's massive gifts being given. People are having their car notes paid. People are having the tuition for their child paid by their parent. 
understand what is happening. What is happening isn't that the parent is paying the bills. So boomer parent is paying the bills for a millennial. What's actually happening is they're paying their own bill because they did the set of politics where the millennial couldn't live today. So the bill that the boomer is paying is not a, is not a, 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 a it's a multi gen and that's why the government isn't taxing it in my view because what they're saying is that boomer, your, your parent, your children, your, your, the idea of having a child, it, it exists for two generations, maybe even three, but definitely two, not one. So the, the, and it lasts for much longer. It isn't just to 18, it's to 25. That's why they raise the age on the, on the medical care. If they could, they raise it more because what they did is they created a set of policies by allowing this to happen where people can't support themselves. That's what this represents. When these lines cross, you have to go back to a time when the assets are deflated and live on the gap, on the advantage of the gap. So it's not that the, the 70 year old boomer is paying the bills for the 36 year old um, Gen Z uh, uh, millennial. No, what they're actually doing is just paying their own bill. White people understand that. I'll explain in a second. Seems like we don't. Over the next 20 years, $90 trillion of worth of assets is expected to move between generations, mostly from older generations such as boomers to millennials, according to a new wealth report from global property consultant the Knight Frank. The transfer of wealth will make affluent millennials the richest generation in history. So we, our contemporaries are about to be the richest generation in history, and we think we're going to live good next to them with no wealth. Make it make sense. Millennials have struggled much more than previous generations to purchase their own homes thanks to rising debt, high interest rates, and a drop in housing supply. And while millennials' best chance for wealth may simply be to inherit, uh, some are better poised to create it for themselves, said Mike Pickett. 310-388-3499 if you want to give your opinion. This is a lesson. I was almost going to do this as a just a presentation and then post it, but I decided to do a call. I appreciate the first call because some of this stuff is heavy. Um, if you want to speak on interest rates or what you're going through with your boomer, you can. If not, it's fine. It goes beyond the simple shift of existing wealth, Pickett says. This is where he gets wrong. I think the diversity of opportunity to create wealth has also grown. For example, there are YouTubers worth tens of millions. See, this is the hustle, just like LeBron James and Drake, is to tell you something that they don't know nothing about. I would want to know if Pickett ever made money on YouTube. Because if you didn't make money on YouTube, I don't want to hear from you about YouTube millionaires. I'm on YouTube right now, and I'm telling you, he done made that up. So in a country of hundreds of millions of people, only 41,000 YouTube accounts with more than a million subscribers. There's only 388,000 accounts with more than 100,000 subscribers. So he's talking about thousands of people, if not hundreds, and framing an idea of an escape. But he don't want to talk about the gig jobs that will lead to no middle class. Because if he tells you that, then he has to deal with the fact that everything is inheritance now. I want to talk. Ain't no, ain't no massive amount of YouTube millionaires. He made that up. Bring them to me. I set them straight. I ain't here for it. Everybody get that work. I don't care if it's President Obama or this picket man. 90% of YouTube channels never get to 10,000 subscribers. Less than 6% of YouTube channels are monetized in the YouTube Partner Program. 3 million YouTube channels monetizing. Less than 550,000 channels have play buttons worldwide. Come on, man. And he And what he put in here to make it all work isn't pension jobs are rising, government jobs like the post office are rising, is that we got YouTubers worth tens of millions. Bro, you telling people anything. You telling people anything. But you don't have to take my word for it. White boomers are having a discussion that far too few, and I'm not going to say none, far too few, few if any, ADOS black boomers are having in their circles. They're not just having the discussion. It's something that of, how, of what Gen Z are doing wrong. They're having a very personal discussion about how they ate everything on the tree. Do boomers feel like the millennials are going to come down hard on them when they take power? Question mark. No, I don't think so. I do believe millennials would have a right to be angry with us boomers for screwing up a wonderful country that they won't get to enjoy like we did. And this is a real person. You can see him right here. He posted this on uh, 
the internet as a as a part of a, a thread. Quora, I believe. But boomers are the millennials' bet parents or grandparents. They love us. We love them. Yeah. We complain about each other, but we really do wish them well. We boomers did stupid things that younger generations will have to deal with. Letting schools get cheap, letting Uber exist, letting Barack Obama, a Kenyan white man, run as a fucking ADOS person and, and to make no sense and then give us gig jobs. Uh, and so many things, if we really get into it, letting the wealthy people take back all the wealth under the guise that government shouldn't be in nobody's business. Break that wealth up. In addition to a great country, generations are like medication. There's a bit of poison along with good stuff. Pray that the future of the U.S. after I'm gone can be, still be good. I'm sorry we took for granted, meaning we boomers took for granted that the good times would go on and didn't work harder to make that happen. Again, I don't play. That's what he's talking about. The shift in this chart post Reagan where the boomers basically said, just give me everything. I want to eat. And then the answer now in our lifetime is a specific one boomer being tied to you and looking out for you alone and giving you a chunk of transfer. And for black folks, because we know nearly none break $350,000, that's in the hundreds, if not few thousand. I want to talk. I want to make sure I get it clear because y'all are living in 1980 and you actually need to understand 2024. You are talking to me as if you are this woman and this woman is not your friend. She's your grandmama. I want to talk today. I'm just having a discussion. We in here on a Sunday. I kind of had to get to this. I want you to, I sent this to Yvette. This is another Quora and he really got even more specific. And this is the discussion I would hope that we can start having amongst black boomers with their Gen X, with their millennials, with their Gen Z, all in a room. We messed up. How can we do right? But the first part is to understand the we messed up part. Wood Butch Butcher said this. I work with Wood, theology, economy, and politics. This is retired. What are some pros and cons of the baby boomer generation? I'm a boomer, born in 46. We're like everyone else, just folks. But our times were what they were, and I'll respond to that. I grew up, listen to this, while the New Deal was in full swing, the rise on that line that I was talking about. The U.S. had outproduced Europe in the Axis powers, and this was a huge factor in winning World War II. The adults were heady with success, as the U.S. said about rebuilding war-torn countries. That is part of what we saw with that rise. The other countries in Europe, they didn't have the factories. They had all been burnt down. So we just stepped right in. When you look at that home ownership, a lot of the projects here in LA, those were factories that were reconditioned as the white folks moved out into the houses that the FHA allowed them to have. Hmm. The adults were heady with success as the U.S. set about rebuilding war-torn countries, friend and foe alike, and expanding our country's economic and social development. This leads me to four observations which I believe are critical. This is the level of discussion that you got to be having at home. And if ain't nobody having this, shut the fuck up. We not having no more discussion. Excuse my language on this Sunday. I'm not having no more discussions where you tell me that interest is traditionally high. And we know based on our chart that we have that you were an outlier. We not having no discussions based on anecdotal experiences. We going to pull out the numbers, and if the numbers don't match what you're saying, you got to be quiet, whether you 22 or whether you 72. I want to talk. So let's get to his four observations. One, it worked. It worked. We built housing, education, talking about boomers, communications, and transportation on a scale the world had never seen. Number two, the tax structure that made this possible was hated by the wealthy. Was hated by the wealthy. As I showed you earlier, we have now changed the estate tax in the favor of the wealthy. Led by people like Elizabeth Warren, who benefit from it because she's rich, while telling us that she's on our side. They used to start taxing at a couple hundred thousand dollars. Now it ain't till 13 million per person, 26 million per couple. The tax structure that made this possible was hated by the wealthy, many of whom had fought it tooth and nail and lost that battle in the late 30s when we got the New Deal. They broke up that wealth. The post-war economic and social expansion overlooked entirely social groups who were despised, considered unimportant, or both. Blacks, women, Indians, old people, the mentally ill. 
the U.S. continue its belief with that with its military and economic might, it could remake much of the world to serve the business interests of the U.S. Wasn't no immigrants here like that. They had blocked them out. They didn't start coming till they already had their houses and their cars. The baby boomers grew up in a time of economic and social growth, but we were too naive or too unprepared to share this growth with our sisters and brothers. The privileged classes were too clever and too strong to allow it. Now they are more powerful than ever. It was the threat of massive social resistance that finally convinced FDR to undertake the New Deal. That is policy. That is ADOS Advocacy Foundation. That is the reparations movement. That is the kindling that this channel is actually allowing you to start to believe. But it cannot happen if you let your old boomer tell you that his interest rates are the normal rates. You can't do nothing for me. You might as well not be my follower if you can't stand up in the room and say, that ain't true. I need some heart. Once that massive resistance was satisfied, they went to sleep and left it for the baby boomers. So basically the boomers' parents, that's Dr. King and them, did this set of politics and they set it in place for a nine-year-old. That nine-year-old came of age and they put on a suit instead of actually doing some politics. Don't let your grandmama who was nine talk about she was out there. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to be out there, but most likely she was in the house. Make her show you the picture. Can we talk? Make her show you the politics throughout your life, because if she was out there then, the next question is why you weren't out there at 25, grandma? Why haven't you been out there at the Adolf's Advocacy Foundation? You said you was out there at nine. Don't let her tell you she finished now, because you're still here. I need you to see what I'm saying today because I need you to understand that there is a discussion that needs to be had that is being had, not every white boomer, but they having it at a level that we need to be having it. It was the threat of massive social resistance that finally convinced FDR to undertake the new deal. That's what led post thirties to the shift. That's what we need now. We need to hate LeBron and love ourselves. I'm sorry, and I'm not telling you to advocate for any violence towards LeBron James, but I can care less what car he drives or whether him and his wife been together a long time or anything else. They can take that off TV and the gambling. Once that massive resistance was satisfied, they went to sleep and left it for the baby boomers. And like Russia today, we had just enough food and jobs that among us, there were insufficient numbers of committed people to carry out that resistance. They put on the suit. We were focused on our own lives. Education was starved and denigrated. Women did not get the ERA, uh, the era. Uh, blacks were given some token improvements in prison at extraordinary rates, mass incarceration. Hispanics, uh, I know it's a stupid word, as a group were simply ignored or lumped with blacks. Thank you so much, Uncle Tones. And uh, into people of color, uh, the great infrastructure of the 50s and early 60s have been left to rot slowly. The mentally ill were put into the streets and left to fend for themselves, which they cannot do. They call in 310-388-3499. I think they want to hear from you too. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Give me your take on it. Uh, hey, Tom. You know, uh, my name is Steven from Chicago. And uh, what I wanted to say, if I could just give you a quick example, a lot of times what me and my wife deal with is that our grandparents are upset with us not committing as as hard as they did to religion and funding and giving giving money and it's because we don't have the same structuring that they had when they joined these religions. We don't have the same stability where you can work down the street or you don't drive that far. Mm. We have we have more to do. So we can't be as tied to religion as they once were. And I noticed that, that that's a huge difference. Our parents didn't commit to the religion like they did. They did a lot more. So I just wanted to give that example. Like, thank you. No, thank you for call, calling in on this Sunday. I think somebody uh, might have learned from that. And what we have as a discussion is a necessary one. Let me take another caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hey man, what's up? So I wanted to call and give you uh, a small example, a personal story, a Come on. personal life. Come on. About how 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 uh, how real this is. 
So just give me a second. So my I was raised by my grandparents. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was late, silent gen, born in I think thirty eight, and my grandmother was a former born in thirty two. They both bought their house in old four. They paid seventy five thousand for it. When right now it's worth about two hundred thousand. They both passed in the past four years. Which means that when they passed, they left us a piece of property with about a hundred and fifty thousand in equity. Okay. So I took over that property and I started paying the remaining mortgage just left on it. There's about forty thousand left. So I say that to say that you're absolutely correct when you say that if you don't have people from generations past to leave you anything, you have nothing left. Come on. And I I started trying to make this case to my family members way back in 2017 because I've been listening to you on your bed since 2016, 2015. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I ran into massive resistance. This was back. This was back when Trump first took office, and I remember y'all did a show called, uh, I believe it's Midnight in America. Mm-hmm. And when I tried to, when I tried to explain to my 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 family members, my aunts and, and individuals like that, hey, y'all are on Snap, y'all are on houses. They just made Ben Carson the uh, the director of HUD. Remember that? Yep. And I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to explain to them. I'm like, listen, I've been listening to. You know, this guy named Antonio Moore and his sister named Yvette Carnell. And if their analysis is right, we got some real serious stuff coming. It's not here yet, but it is most definitely on the way. And we have to start getting prepared for it. And everybody told me that basically I was crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. I've been on housing 20 years. I've been on housing 30 years. I've been in food stamps since 81, right? So... In 2000, when the pandemic hit, everything collapsed. HUD gets cut, housing benefits get cut, and my entire family, which we're talking about anywhere between seven and ten people, are all currently living in that house that my grandmother bought 20 years ago. Come on. On on the interest rate and the price from 2004. So the survival of my family right now is all based on a purchase my grandmother made two decades ago. And I say that to say this, that people keep trying, because I'm a millennial. I was born in 85. Okay. And, and, and I keep hearing people trying to tell us uh, different personalities, different people online and on, in the news cycle. Hey, well, we got to support this group overseas because Malcolm said this or because the pastor said this. And I keep reiterating the fact that this is 2024. Recycling or regurgitating what someone said in 1960 or 1965 or 1970 will not serve us in 2024. And I wanted to give you that example to let you know that, and to let the listeners know, the, the millennials and the Gen Z, the people that are my age who are in their 30s or in their 20s, that that, that regurgitation model of old scholars and old economics is not going to work now. And what you're saying is absolutely true, and I just wanted to give a personal story to kind of illustrate that, and I appreciate you. No, thank you. Thank you. That was a wonderful testimony on this Sunday. I'm coming around because now I got to get more specific. It's this gentleman that I, I had to block because I didn't understand what he was talking about. And I don't think he did at a, certain, uh, at a certain point. So he basically had this tweet waiting for the perfect time to chase your dream. Stop. Conditions will never be ideal because reality doesn't care about your plans. I looked at him. He looks middle aged like myself. If you have 40, 70 percent of what you need to succeed, execute the plan. Don't miss the right time for the right time. Have you missed opportunities due to indecision, the art of decision and uh, action? Join the wait list today. What I said back to him is these people say anything. This isn't a dream chasing era. This is an era of extreme wealth inequality and asset over inflation. 
Many are at a point where they say anything and showing or are showing signs of craze expressed as self-belief. He came back and started talking about how he wasn't talking about money. We middle-aged people with responsibilities. Chasing your dreams. I found a guy because I want to just make sure that the general understanding of chasing dreams. They talking about like entrepreneurship. They talking about uh, 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 actually saving for retirement or jumping off in retirement. We talking about real things in America that cost tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some people want to create something new. They become entrepreneurs and they work hard to make their dreams real. The average business started to, to start it, not to make money, is thirty to forty thousand dollars. Again, we can go back. Some years, and I showed you the middle black family only worth when you take out depreciating assets two, three thousand dollars. We have so many people that are using the rhetoric of aspiration and bootstrap babble, then being dishonest and hiding their hands when called on it, that it makes it hard because then they also, I went back to what I'm saying, they don't have the expertise to speak in the space, but we created no expertise in this space. You had somebody else come in my thread and say, ain't going to get anything by just sitting on your butt and whining. So a, a, a educational and political discussion becomes whining. Well, we just read about how the boomers came out of the New Deal policies and their advantages, not just individual effort during the Depression era policies. I said, saying I believe in myself or throwing money into speculative lottery level investments, that's what I consider crypto, are not, are not doing something nor is rambling. Actually, again, the chart shows how crazy you are in this moment. During this level of inequity, random movement, just movement for the sake of it, does not equate to financial prospect. This is not 1960. This is not 1960. Opening up that restaurant, it's probably going to close. Understand that. You got commercial property, hundreds of millions of dollars, and these people are losing money because of things going on around us that we have no idea that show that this is a very unstable time. The lines have crossed again, and the rich are losing. What you think is going to happen to you? Now, somebody could say, are you saying that I shouldn't try? No, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to love your child or show a little more love to your wife or love yourself. But what I am saying, hold on, is that the economics behind chasing dreams will have you in the middle of a nightmare. You are framing, knowing the financial reality surrounding your life as whining. It's stupidity. You had the other guy, he came back and said some, uh, the one uh, that, that initially talked, I ended up having the block, Ed Lattimore, and said some craze and my, my, about, you know, I, I, I was just, I was just talking about general. I said, it's an ignorant post given the moment. You don't know enough. You're talking about state of mind. Look above, meaning that chart that I showed earlier that shows that the lines have crossed and the bottom 90 is actually taking now less wealth home than has less wealth than the top 0.1, top 150,000 families. 135 million families have more wealth, have less wealth than the top 0.1, 135. And we are in the bottom 40 million of those families, 50 million of those families. We're not even in the top part. That's a couple, five, six hundred thousand dollars. You're talking about state of mind. Look above. That's the reality. And, sh and just say, I didn't know what I was talking about. Your whole post is a dishonest way. Follow me, because this is what a lot of them do. Your post, and when I go back to the post to make it clear, because I don't want people to get lost, waiting for the perfect time to chase your dreams, stop. Condition will never be ideal, because reality doesn't care about your plans. Hold on. Your whole post is a dishonest way of kicking people while they're down. So you have people driving gig jobs because gig jobs were allowed to supplant real jobs. And you're going to kick them, but then you're going to be dishonest and act like you're not kicking them for considering that a hard day's work. Your whole post is a dishonest way of kicking people while they're down and hiding your feet by framing it as empowerment. This is not an era of failure due to lack of self-effort. It is baked in between gig jobs existing to massive wealth transfers being supported by tax policy. So we got the tax policy allowing for people to transfer the 13 and the 26 million as a couple. They married white folks at 70 percent. So they getting up to 26 million dollars. You got the uh, gig jobs existing. And again, I'm not saying I don't understand people doing it to survive. But we have discussed you thinking that that's a business. It don't make no sense. You're liquidating the car. But you don't even know you're kicking them. So what are we even talking about? 
You think, meaning it's Ed Lattimore, that this is a positive statement in the middle of this era. So this is the era, the lines have crossed, and you think saying chasing your dreams is helpful. All right. How Now came the honesty from Ed. He got so frustrated, he got honest. He got honest. Had a fan working for DoorDash. It's not a job. It's a scam. He got frustrated, got honest, because everybody started sharing my video. How do y'all even function with this much victim mentality? So now we we we, we dog whistling to being a conservative right wing person. Now we get into honesty. Just saying anything and don't know enough. Identities built on a mix of fantasy, aberrations, and the boomer era. I can't block this guy. Just ignorance and courses for sale because he's selling the courses. This is the decade. Listen to this from 2018. This is, and talking about the last decade, it's gotten worse. This is the decade in which wealth inequality has increased the most in U.S. history. So if you're 40, your life has been in the middle of an era that required transfers and you didn't even know it during a time that wealth inequity took off in a way we have never seen in the history of the world, in the history of the country, including slavery. And you didn't even know it. Then he asked about what black people being a monolith. We know based on the data that they are a financial monolith, largely wealthless, especially working age. But the other thing you saw is if you go to his page, and you're welcome to do it on your own, and I'm not asking you to, to berate him or anything else, but go to his page. You got to start looking at what, uh, what else they post. So he had a bunch of uh, boxing, and he had uh, little memes, and he had a lot of classes and energy talk. On my page is this. This is what's on my page. Discussions of economics. The Federal Reserve will only cut interest rates once this year, cautioned Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta President Raphael Bostic. So we got extremely high interest rates. They thought it was going to get cut three or four times down from extremely high just to high. And now they're saying because inflation is stubborn, part of the reason inflation is stubborn is that those transfers are kicking in and the white folks around you have money from their boomers. And this guy's telling you to chase your dreams regardless. Walmart wants more wealthy shoppers. Well, what they're also saying is they don't want you. That's the other side. We want less of you. But that's his class, the vice breakers. We knew it went to a class. They far too often post these oddball, and this is a different post from someone else, the habits of highly successful people, how Will, how do they, Will Smith break up at seven and Dwayne Johnson wake up at four. I got to be at somebody's house to see they wake up at four every day. And then what time you taking your nap? You don't tell me you wake up at four and then you going to sleep at a regular hour tonight. They far too often post these oddball select celebrations of one-off well stories. Then it leads to a class for sale or something that makes it the fault of millennials or Generation Z effort, not system systemic failure that requires major policy lifting to anchor healthy dreams within. You know? He didn't post that. Someone else did. But since I went to his page, I'm getting all this uh, uh, energy talk, all these energy posts. This is his class. So he didn't tell you about the class when he was talking about uh, uh, chasing dreams. The, so he his class is about alcoholism or something. So he'll give you a class about the alcoholism, and then he'll turn around. He'll tell you, chase your dreams. Your dreams lead you to alcoholism. Then he'll give you the vice breaker class. Somebody else said, I get the severity of our time, but to conclude, people shouldn't pursue their aspirations doesn't sit right. I don't care what sits right with you. I don't care. I just know the moment that we end chasing dreams will have you back in the vice breaker class. I just know that you need to go watch these videos by a lot of great YouTubers that are out there framing the national narrative around wealth. Proof everyone is broke. It's shouldn't versus can't shouldn't pursue their dream their aspirations versus can't pursue them discover my books and courses vice breakers kick your bad habits 119 dollars man if you don't get out of here again we got this chart this chart frames it all i wanted to have this discussion this sunday if i didn't get to your call i apologize please please support this channel tonetalks.net i just wanted to have this discussion because you can't live in 1980 if you in 2024, the only way you can do that is somebody going to leave you that four five hundred thousand dollars to push you back in time. And many of you don't have that and are still trying. We out.